Namaste. Oh, I am so glad that you are here, whether this is your first time to Live, Love, Engage, or you are a regular subscriber. I'm just delighted to be bringing to you another interview that we're going to be having on the show. But before I get to that, just in case you are a first time listener or viewer on YouTube, I am Gloria Grace, the light messenger and spiritual business coach. And women entrepreneurs hire me to help them leverage their intuition to break through their revenue ceilings and to achieve sustainable business growth. And Part of what keeps us stuck sometimes is issues that we've had in the past. And that's a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. So I am really delighted to uh, introduce you to Valerie Yuard, from, who is going to be talking about From Trauma to Triumph. She has uh, she's seen it all. And in fact, she's a published author, a speaker, expert who works with people from all over the world. And she brings you on a decluttering journey to declutter more than just your space. So I'm really fascinated to talk with you today, Valerie. I'm to know about, you know, trauma and clutter and how those things get together. So, but first off, let me just officially welcome you to Live, Love, Engage. Thank you so much, Gloria Grace. I appreciate it so much. Um, well, I, as I, as I said, I'm, I'm intrigued because you, you're involved in decluttering uh, as your business, but you also have dealt with trauma. But before we get into the specifics of how those two relate, I'd love to start off the show asking our guests a little bit about your journey and what has brought you into doing the work that you do today. So I wonder if you can share that with our audience today. Yes, totally. So basically, unfortunately, I had experienced a childhood trauma and it had an impact on my life. Like when I arrived at the beginning of uh, adult life, you know, in the 20s, I was a lot cluttered. And I had to stop going at university and things like that to really focus on healing my trauma. And I was thinking I heal it, you know, things were starting to get better. And at some point, you know, my mom asked me, Val, I don't understand. Why do you have that much pasta? Are you cooking for an army? And the thing is, when she left, I opened my pantry and they were easily 20 pounds of pasta, you know? I don't know how many cans of tomato sauce and maybe 20 cans of peaches and flowers, like tons. But I looked around the house and my kids has more toys than the daycare. And there were piles of paper on my table. And in my closet, I have maybe three size up, three size downs of clothes, just in case, you know, more clothes than I can ever wear. So it's ring a bell, but for me, it was kind of normal. You know, in society, you start having lots of things while you're more easy. And then we arrived to move because my husband was military and the movers came home and tell me, you know what? You need to let go of at least half your belongings. Half my belongings? It was kind of whoa, what are you talking about, you know? So we tried to let go of the possession, but it was too many of things to let go in a too short period of time. So Jay and my husband asked to move forward to the new location and I stay behind with the kids to declutter. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, like the first night he left, I was so crying. It was kind of the moment where it was, oh my God, what is happening? You know, will I be able to reunite the family? Will, am I a hoarder? Lots of question, like identity question, you know? And I cry like I never cried <laughs> before. And then the following day, I started to declutter. And decluttering a little bit daily, daily, daily. And what happened is at some point, I realized that I was getting in touch with my emotion more than before. Like the fact of manipulating my material possession and making decisions helped me clear out my trauma. So as I let go of my possession, I healed my trauma. And we were able to reunite the family and that was really, really good. 
and I decided to become a professional organizer to be able to help other people in similar situation. And what I observed when I became a professional organizer is most of the people, it's with the decluttering that they have difficulty. After that, placing things here and there, that's fine. But the decluttering, the act of letting go. And almost all my clients were talking to me about their trauma. So we did, did some research, we contacted specialists and uh, researcher, and this is where we are today. We help people that has trauma and had accumulated clutter because of that to really be able to get back control of their life and of their home to be able to enjoy life. Mm. Wow. So many things are going through my head right now. And, and, and actually, what the latest thought that came to me is that you know, they've, they've done TV shows, especially here in the United States, about hoarders. I mean, there's a show yeah. called Hoarders. I, yeah. I've never really watched it. I mean, I think I've seen like commercials for it. But it makes me feel a lot of more sympathy and empathy for these people because, and, and I'm just even still even reflecting on my own life. Like, for instance, as a kid, I, I wouldn't say I prided myself on a messy room, but it was... It was like I had a lot of stuff and, and it was like my area of control because that was an area of my life that I could control. It was my room. And because I grew up, I had trauma. I had an alcoholic dad. And so that was like my area of life that I, that I wanted to handle. But then I also see throughout my life there, there have been times where, yeah, I did maybe accumulate few too many things over the years. And, I, and I've, and I've done that with the clothes too, <laughs> as well. So I can relate to that, but I find it fascinating. And, and I can see even in my own journey, as I have healed my trauma that I have been able to let go of stuff too. So I find this truly, truly fascinating. Um, what, what would you say to someone who might be listening to this and, and thinking like they're looking around their house and going, Ooh, Hmm. Um, <laughs> is she talking about me? What do I, what do I do? So, so what would you recommend to someone? The first thing is it's not your fault. Yes. You can have control on the future and on what will happen with those material possession. But if the situation you are in is because of a trauma, they are, link it together okay and we developed a four-step process but maybe before going into the four-step process it's maybe better to talk a little bit about the link between trauma and clutter so the thing is when someone had a trauma the brain changed the way it works and it starts being on a higher level of alertness than other people like the amygdala, the place in the brain for the stress response, the fight, flight, form or freeze response, is requesting cortisol. And then the cortisol raises and raises. The problem is with people that have trauma, the cortisol doesn't reduce as much during the night than other people. So it's always stayed too high. And when it's high like that, it's affecting the frontal lobe, the part in the front of your brain. And in here, you maybe have heard about executive function or ADHD. So the executive function, they are slowed down by the cortisol. And it's a lot of big words that I'm saying right now, but basically what happened is the capability to plan, the capability to organize, the capability to sort, they are slowed down by the stress hormone that is the cortisol. So it's more difficult to get up in the morning to do the task. It can be more hard to plan when I will do that or where I will put that. And it can look like I get into the house and I left my lunch bag in the entrance and the pile of mail on the countertop. So this is how things start to piles up. It's really not because you don't want to clean or you don't want to put things away. It's because the frontal lobe, the part in the front here is slow down and it makes it harder to do those tasks like 
sorting the mail and putting in the recycle bin what needs to be there. It makes it harder to do the dishes after cooking a meal. But the thing is, when you know that, now that you're aware of that, it's your responsibility to decide to do something to improve because it is possible to change that. And it is possible to really feel better and take back control of our executive function. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, I've done enough reading uh, different books about the brain and, and talk with other people about that. There is the ability, we have that ability to build new neural connections. And, and so exactly. That so that's really to offer hope to anyone out there is you you don't have to say this way you can change so yeah. you know, you mentioned that there's there's four steps that people can take out if you can maybe briefly highlight it I know if anyone wants more detail we'll we'll share a little bit later about how people can get in touch with you but uh, yeah I would love for you to share that yeah basically the four step process is the first one is to reduce the amount of stress okay. Yeah. And it's really that because, as I said, the cortisol is the stress hormone. So we want to reduce that to be able to have the frontal lobe kick in and work better. So first, stress, first step is really to reduce stress. The second step is a mindset step. It is called the letting go mindset. So the thing is, when we start to declutter, we often have that inner voice of us that is not necessarily as nice to ourselves as it could be. And we also want to do something, but we don't do it. And we're kind of not balanced or aligned between our thoughts and our action. So mindset is really, really important to be in alignment and also be able to make decision about keeping or not an item later on. Because most of the time when the mindset section is not done, we arrive to make a decision, okay, do I keep that China dishes? Oh, just in case I need it to a special occasion. So lots of things is going in the just in case category instead of having a clear yes or a clear no. So the stress, the mindset, then the next one is the time. We call it discover free time. Because clutter didn't accumulate in a day, it won't go overnight. So we will need some time to be able to manage that clutter and get back control or, or surrounding. And also, we don't want the clutter to go too fast. Otherwise, we have a tendency to purchase back item and to clutter it back. So we need the right pace here. And the fourth step is the one everybody's waiting for. It is called simplify your living space. So basically, that one is the decluttering, opening the closet, the cupboard, the drawer, and the boxes maybe, or the piles that you have, and be able to let go of the clutter. And it's way easier when you're here because you have all the strategy you learn in the three first step to be able to accelerate how you make decision and be comfortable with the decision you're making. Mm -hmm. So after all that, you're in control of your life. You're able to maintain a peaceful environment at home. Mm, wonderful. Uh, and it definitely makes sense to be able to take care of the all of that mental work first before you actually tackle the hard stuff. Because I know in the past, sometimes when I've had to tackle something, um, it... In fact, actually, I'm even t looking at it a little bit right now. I I've have some stuff at another location right now, and every time I go there, and it's like the thought of trying to move it is just like, oh, I just can't deal with it right now. And so <laughs> I know that's that's it's you know it'll get done, but but it's but it is I've have seen that that can happen in the past is that you can yeah, yeah you can just be stuck because it just seems too overwhelming. That's exactly what I was about to say, that procrastination effect come because we are overwhelmed. And that is often because there's too much cortisol in our brain mm -hmm. at that moment. So we right. feel overwhelmed. And yes, it feels like some thing. Yeah. But by reducing the stress from the get-go, you will see right away the difference and the capability and the energy to be able to tackle that task. Yeah, yeah. Is there... Any way that someone who wants to be able to do this um, could possibly get it wrong? 
what you're talking about? When people do it too fast, like for example, sometimes I see uh, people wanting to help other people and they arrive with a dumpster and they throw everything out right away. A little bit like we see in the hoarder show, you know, it creates another trauma because of the loss of all possession in a short period of time. It's a little bit like when you have a fire, you know, and you lost all your things, it's creating a, another trauma. So I encourage to go progressively to let go of, of the belongings because you're, you have like a, a set point, a comfort zone where you are used to be with a certain level of clutter. And if that change too fast, your subconscious will have a tendency to bring you back to the same level of clutter, either by purchasing item, either by finding item somewhere, but it will have a tendency to clutter it back. So just go one step at a time when it's time to declutter. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, I was also just starting to think about that sometimes it's not your clutter that you have to deal with. And so, for instance, um, when my sister passed away a few years ago, I had to clear out her garage where she had been saving magazines for years <laughs> and, and then found some of my dad's papers who had also even passed like 20 years before that. So it was like all of this stuff that I had to get through. Um, what advice do you have for, for someone who has to deal with like, like in that instance where it's somebody else's clutter and, and that again, you know, you're, you're grieving, but you have to deal with it because I had to sell her house. So I had to decide, you know, especially even some of her personal papers, what did I want to keep? Cause she journaled and, and I finally opted it to not save a lot of it because I felt that it was her personal stuff and that I didn't want to have to necessarily reread it later. I have a little bit of regard about that, but I still feel at the moment it was the right thing to do. But have, what do you feel about that? It's really to choose what are the item or the possession that you will use. Mm. Because there's no point of adding clutter to your own asshole if you are not going to use it. So like, for example, if you decide that you like the set of knife, for example, but maybe think about letting go of the knife you already have and replace the set of knife. So think about things that you will use. Think about things that, yes, you will remember. The thing is, the memories of that person is not in the belonging of that person that passed. So one thing that I encourage often, if there's too many items, like for example, when a parent pass and we have to let go of lots of belongings over there, is to take some picture of the things that make us some uh, story or memories, you know, mm -hmm. and do a book with it. And in that book, write a little story about that picture, about that object, that what was the significance? Oh, that was the doll that we were playing when I was kids. Or, oh, that was her favorite knitting basket. So she was already always adding that knitting basket. Or that was the cookie jar <laughs> that we had the treat in. So write a little story in that book so you have all the memories you want in something that is not too big and you're able to if you really feel the need to remember that person more than what you already have in yourself you have access to that memory book i love that and i and it's funny because i actually have my grandmother's cookie jar that used to have the cookies that i would get from her house but but i'm thinking eventually that's a really good idea about taking the pictures. And, and I've done that actually with some of my kids, you know, artwork when they were little, it was like, you know, all these projects that they make and it's like, you just can't keep everything. And so, exactly. so I wound up taking pictures of, of some of those and, and having to let go. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to ask you about is, and this actually helped me again when my sister had passed because she actually had a copy of the lovely Marie Kondo book about, uh, and I forget what, what it's called now, but, um, 
and and when I came home, I actually used that philosophy to go through all of my clothes, um, you know. And it's like, what is it that you you know to really only save what you love or, or something like that? Um, have have you? What do you think about her philosophy? Her philosophy has some really good point, but some point also that are more difficult to use in a North America setting. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is. What is about if you love the object, that's really, really good. If we talk about the way of uh, folding clothes, awesome. But when we talk about put everything in the room in the middle, like empty all the room that are around and then declutter everything at once, it's a little bit harder because mm -hmm. over there, what happened is there's a main room and there's different room around that. And this is not how our structure are built here. And they don't necessarily have as much item as we have. So putting everything, like, I don't know if you saw her show on Netflix, but to do one episode that is about 45 minutes, it takes six weeks of a full team working on decluttering the place. And then people expect to do that in a week after having seen the show. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so there's like, and a little thing is she say, touch everything to know if you love it. Mm -hmm. When you add that trauma, it's a little bit too overwhelming. Mm. In my philosophy, it's more about put on a pair of gloves when mm. you declutter. Because mm. if you touch everything, you have all the memories that arrive, mm -hmm. all the emotion. And this is mostly when people that have trauma when they stop and they procrastinate and they postpone yeah. the decluttering. That's because they're not able to manage that wave of emotion. So by wearing a pair of gloves, people are able to declutter 40% more and are less exhausted at the end of the decluttering session. Wow. That makes so much sense. Yeah, because, you know, our, our fingers, it's when you're touching that, it really is, it's you've got that tactile sense, and it can really trigger the brain coming back yeah. to the memory. So I love that. That's, that is a really, really excellent <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> that, yeah, I think that's great. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, a question because I love asking my client, my clients, my guests. <laughs> I guess this, because um, I love the different answers that people come up with. So what are you curious about right now? Oh, that's a really good question. Right now, I will say that I'm curious about the different way people are enjoying life. Because it's really like for some people, it can be to walk in nature and they will be grounded. Some people will ground better in mountain and other at the beach. And some other people will prefer to manipulate things like either doing some clay or craft or knitting. Like what makes it that we have different things that grounded us? I know we are all different, but what is it at the center of that that is something that i'm really curious about hmm. so what grounds you <laughs> nature is grounding me a lot hmm. like going walking and i love when they're both uh, maybe a lake and wood like you have the access to both the water and the wood at the same time yeah. i really really enjoy that yeah, I do too. I can relate to that. I mean, I love, I love being at the beach. I mean, I love, I love, but I love water anywhere. And I've realized that when I, I grew up in Michigan and was able to go to Girl Scout camp in the summertime and it would be up in like the woods and we'd go to a lake and yeah, I, I love that. That's really my way of even really communicating with, you know, with God, um, source, and I, it was just, I really felt close uh, to God when I was out in nature. So I love that, that you do that as well, that you enjoy being in nature. Um, I really want to stop saying, um, <laughs> after all of my speaker training, you think I'd know by now that I should just be, pause for a moment while I think about what else I want to ask you about. And actually that is bringing me to what I want to ask is, 
Is there anything else that I haven't asked you about in relation to clutter and trauma that uh, you'd like to share with our listeners or any other last tip that you could have? Oh, and last tip, I can go with some other tips, you know, like, okay. for example, set the atmosphere when you want to declutter. What I mean by that is we talk about the sense of touch, but there's the other sense also that have an impact on how you feel and how you will be able to manage that decluttering session. So, for example, the sense of smell is really, really strong. That's why a baby is able to recognize its mother by the sense of smell. So if you put a diffuser with an essential oils that you always use the same essential oils, it won't be long that you will realize that session after session, it becomes easier and easier to get started and to stay focused. So that's using essential oils. For the sense of sight, so add some light like brighten the space that you declutter. You know, when we go to the store and we think, oh, I found the perfect pair of shoes to go with that dress. And then you arrive home and you look at the boat together and it's kind of, uh-uh, it doesn't match us. And that's because the light is different. So your perception of the object is different in different contexts. So by putting a lot of light on your closet or in the kitchen cabinet that you're trying to declutter, what happens is you don't feel it as every day, like the same way that when you choose your clothes in the morning. So you're able to make decisions more objectively about keeping or not an item. And I don't ask to taste the things. That sense, I don't hack it when we declutter. <laughs> Yeah, especially because like if you were to do that in the pantry or something, that could really exactly. wind up going in the down fridge. the wrong road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely not good. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I, this has been amazing. And we've, we've gotten a lot in, in a very short amount of time, I feel like so, but it's, but, but I feel like we've accomplished a lot and I really appreciate you being on the show today. If someone out there, desperately needs your help um yes. what how can people get a hold of you what's the, so what's the best way we have two books ah. that are really like put that stuff down and put that stuff down too this one is more about the philosophy the overall philosophy it's a little bit thinner the other one is a little bit bigger and is more about the tactic and the strategy with the four-step process that i talk about so you can find that at uh tiny.ie forward slash do well dash live love engage and you can have access to the ebook and audio book and even the paperback depending of the selection you make in the process all right so yeah that's the best way to get in touch with us and of course over there there's our email and everything all right. Excellent. Well, I'll be sure and have the link to that in the show notes. So if you're listening right now, somewhere where you don't have a pen handy, go to live, love, engage podcast.com and you'll find this episode and you'll be able to get the link to that. And I'll also have it in the YouTube description as well. So make sure you check that out. If you're, if you're watching this, go back and, and look through that. Um, this has been really educational for me and, and so many good tidbits. I, I, I still love the, the glove idea. I think that was great. And, and yes, the idea of having a lot of light on the subject, I think that's very good as well so that you can see everything to decide what you want to be able to, uh, to release, let's say, as opposed to get rid of. Now we're going to release it. And, yeah. and the idea of taking the thing, pictures too. I think that is amazing. And we've got such a, a ways to be able to do that and, and to create even a scrapbook about that. I think that's a wonderful idea for those memories. Yeah. And often it's more about choosing what you want more mm. than looking at what you let go. Ah. It, it's all in the perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, for, that's for sure. So thank you so much for being here. This was a, a wonderful, uh, interview and I knew it was going to be and and I really appreciate you sharing your your wisdom with uh, our audience today. Thank you so much, Valerie. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. 
And I want to appreciate all of you as well. Thank you for listening, for watching. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, make sure that you are subscribed on your favorite podcast platform. And also you can subscribe on YouTube. Uh, click the bell if you're watching it, that. And uh, make sure that you that way you get notified when our new episodes come out. So until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.